Likewise, you younger. Submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Proverbs 3.34 rather. He said, surely he is connect the corners, but he giveth grace to the lowly. He giveth grace. Humility is a facilitator of grace. He facilitates grace. Pride is a limitation of grace. It facilitates grace. The humblest of men are the most engraced of men. Humblest. They are the most engraced of men. Moses, in Numbers chapter 11, verse 3. Twelve three. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Exodus twelve three. Eleven three. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. The man Moses was very meek. The man Moses was very great. And you know that greatness is a function of grace. That was Moses. What about Joseph? In Genesis chapter 41 verse 15 to 16, we saw the humility of Joseph. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamt a dream. And there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou can't un canst understand the dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. I don't, don't, don't allocate me any glory. I don't know how to interpret dreams. It is only God who can give a man the interpretation. When God saw the way Joseph spoke, he gave him the whole of Egypt. What of Solomon? First Kings chapter 3 verse 7. Solomon, and now, O Lord, Solomon speaking, said, My God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. Nothing destroys like pride. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8, we saw the humility of Paul the apostle. He said, unto me who I am less than the least of all sins. Is this grace given? If I consider myself bigger than others, I won't see the grace. But since I am less than the least of all sins, this grace is given. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. Paul the apostle also speaking there. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. I am less than all of them. But I carried more grace. Am I communicating? Beloved, arrogance is a killer of grace. Killer. I learned a lot from history. I heard the story of a man very close to God's servant, Papa Bishop Uedipo. Then at the beginning of ministry, this man was so anointed 
with utterance and with impact and everything. He considered himself his equal, even though he was meant to be under his ministry. One day they called him, they said, he called him, he said, Calm down. This your pride will destroy you. He answered, Let it destroy me. It destroyed him. He didn't survive it. It destroyed him. It destroyed him so much. That during the dedication of Faith Tabernacle in 1999, somebody, one pastor was telling me how he saw the man afar looking for where to sit. That the Jew told the story of a man they used to call Baba Ibadan who was big was under his father in the Lord's ministry mega all of a sudden something entered his head he took off from the church took off with crowd he said he broke his father in the Lord's heart because the man was highly valued This man went all the way like this. The grace dried up. He said at the man's funeral, they couldn't count 50 people. One man was so anointed, he stood on the pulpit in South Africa. He said, the world is now under my feet. He was a specialist in raising people from wheelchairs. He was anointed to deal with cripples. Paralysis. That was his last crusade. Because the world is only under the feet of Jesus. The master. He returned back from that crusade. Never to return to any crusade anymore. Died from a wheelchair. Nothing kills grace like pride anytime people begin to praise you they are trying to kill you they are trying to kill grace oh we know that um, oh, well there are many pastors but your own is different you you, you are different you know you, let's say the truth Even within the commission, we all know you are different. He enters the head. Is God speaking to anybody here? I heard a story recently that shook me. It was a story of a man by the name Richard Ngidi. The associate of Rai had Bonke at the beginning of ministry. This man, Bonke had zero miracle ministry. They were a team, tag team. Bonke would preach. Then Richard would step up and pray and all manner of incredible miracles began to happen. Yes, that was how they function. The cripples will walk, blind will see, the lame will, will do this, and then the altar call will be done. It was Rehad Bonke ministry. But Richard was his associate. The team was powerful and formidable. Yes. Bonke didn't pray for headache. It was Richard's assignment to pray for headache, to pray for anything. One day, Richard told one of Bunky's associates, he said, you know I am the brain behind this ministry. He said, the day I leave this ministry will be the end of this ministry. That's what he said with this man. The day I leave this ministry, that is the end. I'm, I'm sure you all know that. It came from his mouth. We don't, how will you know him? 
Myself, I only knew him about two months ago. That I knew the story. So one day, there was a major crusade about to hold. Bonke had arrived and he refused to arrive. He deliberately refused to arrive so that they can see what will happen if he's not there. To frustrate the crusade. Bonke waited and waited and waited and waited. Richard did not come. What will I do today? Oh Lord, please help me. That was how he stepped to the altar. Preached and boom! Miracles erupted everywhere. In the absence of Richard, miracles erupted anywhere, everywhere. So what he thought was the end of Bonky's ministry, if he didn't come, became the beginning. Something is starting in somebody's life. It was the beginning of Bonky's ministry. Boom! That was God said, really, Richard? You thought that you are the one helping Bonke? Let me show you my almightiness. That was how Richard ushered himself out of destiny. Ushered himself out of ministry. After all, I'm the one performing the miracle. And it is Bonke, people know. I mean, it's Bonke that has the name of the ministry. Many, many, many years later, Richard came to the crusade ground of Bonke and sat and stood at the edge of the crowd. Saw multitudes everywhere. He went to the he went to Bonke after the crusade. Say, sir, I missed it. 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 And then left. I don't know the end of Richard till tomorrow. Nobody knows. I called Bunky's crusade director. I said, are you aware of this story? He said, hmm. That Bunky tells them the story permanently of how people should beware of pride, of how people should know that without them God can walk. He said it's a story it's a story you will never forget every on a permanent basis he tells them without you god can walk without you god can walk can you help me tell somebody say calm down god can use any other person apart from you he only decided to use you in his own favor Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. I believe that if I stop here at this moment, see what the crusade director said to me. He said, Bunky narrated this with pain and disappointment on the part of this powerful man of God. All this happened because of pride. Without me, God cannot accomplish his intentions and purpose. And this man was an African man. Powerful preacher carrying powerful unction that had a German European depend on his miracle ministry as a team. Somebody just told me now, why, why didn't we know him? You won't know him. You will never know him. He giveth grace to the humble. Every time people praise you, every time they celebrate you, don't ever forget that there is someone without whom you will be nothing. The character of humility. Number four, so, if I am looking for grace, the life of prayer, the state of helplessness, the character of humility, number four is sincere love for God. Sincere love for